Back in the 1980s, Olsen Filipina was a trailblazer for the Polynesian players now common in rugby league. He debuted with the Balmain Tigers and went on to play more than 100 first grade games, all while working as a garbage collector. That's still his job too. Now he's shared his story in a new book. Nick Ho's reports. They called me the Galloping Garbage because back in the 1980s when I first started, you had to run up behind the trucks and grab the bins from the curbside and uh, people around ride uh, used to come out and say hi to me and, uh, you know, I used to empty their bins and wait with all the kids and everything else, so that's why they called me the Galloping Garbo. I became a Garbo in 1980 because I had to supplement my other wage because I wasn't getting paid enough from rugby league. Plus, when I arrived from New Zealand to Australia, I was 25 stone and had to lose some weight. Yeah, I've been doing this for nearly 40 plus years now, but no, I never regretted it. I get out of bed about two, leave about half past two in the morning, there's no traffic. By the time I'm finished, I'm working against the traffic. It's the best thing ever. I forgot what year it was, the reporters were asking me because they didn't know what Polynesians were. And I, I said to one of the reporters, I said, in a couple of years you'll know exactly what, and everyone want to know what a Polynesian is. And, you know, now they do. Olsen Filipina, Filipina, still going. We had our first trading session here, and one that I'd rather forget about because uh, we went on a road run and I, uh, I wanted to go home after that first road run because I've never done road runs over in New Zealand. And uh, something I wasn't used to and, you know, I just absolutely was buggered and I just threw up for about 20 minutes. Got home and rang my mother and she said, no, you've got to stay. And, and I ended up staying until, until uh, 86 when I retired. Australia wasn't really ready for Olsen when he arrived in 1980. We weren't really used to diversity. Coaches weren't used to managing players from different cultures that have uh, different behavioural characteristics. The crowd starting to move. That makes no mistake. I've never ever heard some of these names I was called, you know, and to me it was uh, very devastating. And sometimes I was very tempted to hit out at people and argue with fans and every time I, was, I got near the fence or scored a try and jog back to my position and, you know, spectators were calling me the ape, go back to where you come from, you know, you don't need your kind over here, go back to the zoo, I'm going, far out. The promise I made to mother was that I'd never get involved in hitting one while I was playing rugby league. And I did that, and I'm glad I kept that promise to her. I couldn't use my fist to hurting one, so I used my body. And I ended up getting voted the, the hardest tackler two years in a row. And that's why the two-step became so famous for me, because I just wanted to get the kick out of the way and didn't want to have to listen to all the abuse. No, 1985 was a very significant year in rugby league. Wally Lewis was undoubtedly the best player in the world and for many was the best player rugby league's ever produced. But Olsen uh, was fired up that year. He wanted to impress his mother, he wanted to impress New Zealand and he just put on a masterclass that will never ever be forgotten. Straight through again, this fellow. That 1985 series I had a plan for Wally Lewis and I uh, used it to my advantage which was which I called the Archie Bumper, and we're just running over the top of them. And I used that right for the whole three tests, and I actually made the guy look really silly. No one had ever given me a chance of getting anywhere near Wally Lewis. But, you know, I proved them wrong and it made my career, and well, a lot of people still remember that test series because it was known at the world's best.
Olsen really is a true pioneer. He was the first big Polynesian star of the televised era. And the millionaires we have today playing the game, they all stand on, on, on the shoulders of giants like Olsen. I get it all the time, you know, you know it's time to retire, but it's like everything else, you know, you know when you want to retire, when the body's out enough and everything else. You know, and, um, you know, when the time's ready, I'll, I'll do it. At this stage, I'll, you know, keep getting up and just do my job, which I love very much. <laughs>